Hey, Tammy, it's Mrs. Floor. Um, I'm kind of experimenting with this screen casting thing, so bear with me. I also have a new little tablet I can write on my screen, which my handwriting is not very good. But let's try this. I actually just made a video that I didn't record somehow, so take two. Uh, in this problem, you've got a ball rolling down a roof, and then it gets to the end of the roof, and it goes flying in the air. Hopefully right away you recognize that this top part is going to be a conservation of energy problem and the bottom part is going to be 2D kinematics. Since you just asked for part B, I'm assuming that uh, the 2D kinematics is what you need help with. But just in case, looking here, conservation of energy says the energy in the beginning is equal to the energy at the end. In the beginning, this object only has potential energy due to gravity. I'm only going to look at the H, that is the rooftop. And then on the right hand side, we're going to do K rotational plus K translational. Rotational meaning the thing is spinning. Translational means that while it's spinning, it's also moving forward. So my next step down would be to substitute in for what is potential and what's kinetic. So MGH equals 1 half I omega squared plus 1 half MV squared. Remember I stands for rotational inertia and it has to do with how the mass is distributed. So a disc would roll different than a hoop would roll different than a ball. Uh, omega is how many radians per second it's spinning with. So this is a disc, a cylinder is a disc. And so I know this, that rotational inertia is 1 half mr squared. Now I've said to you guys over and over, you don't really need to memorize that. But I guess in this day and age where there's going to be an open note test, we might want to just kind of jot down some of the rotational inertias. The other thing that I think is pretty important to know anytime when we have both rotation and translation is that if something is spinning and we know it's radians per second, that means we could also figure out how many meters per second any point on that disk was moving using V equals omega R. So this is a really handy equation. All right, so I'm going to substitute in my rotational inertia. So MGH equals 1 half times. Here's the substitution, 1 half MR squared times omega squared plus one half mv squared. Now in this red circle you'll notice that we get the term r squared times omega squared and so I recognize that that's the same thing as v squared. Um, pretty common type of problem which is why on the next homework or so you have two or three of these problems every time we have something rolling down a ramp. Alright so I'm going to combine one fourth v squared and one half v squared you'll notice I canceled the masses and I get 3 fourths v squared and I, I do a little bit of algebra to find my velocity. Now Tammy, I don't have my calculator sitting here so you know you could plug and chug this value right here. You can get h using trig. Um, but I just made up that it was 4 meters per second. So that hypotenuse here is 4 meters per second. So I'm going to use cosine and sine to find my x component of the velocity and my y component of velocity and then this becomes a 2D problem. So remember, what's happening with a two-dimensional problem is I, I set up what I know. In the x direction, I don't need to do kinematics because there is no acceleration. So it's going to move at a constant velocity, which means I can simply use v equals d over t. And in the y direction, I'm going to figure out what's the part of the total velocity that's in the y direction. I'm going to let down be positive. Acceleration is gravity. Y is the height of the building, which I didn't write down, so I just made up the number 10. I'm going to find the time in the Y direction, and because the time it has to fall down is the same amount of time it has to move over, I'm going to use that T for both columns. So choose the equation Y equals V naught T plus 1 half AT squared. Plug in, use solver, use Wolfram Alpha, do something but solve that quadratic. And then once you have the t here, now technically it will give you two solutions because it's a quadratic. Choose the positive one that makes sense. And then plug in here to get d. And that should be the answer for part b. Hope that helps.